So I'm sitting here doing this and I realise uh, that I actually haven't got any Craviotto snare drums to hand, which I guess is uh, well amusing uh, to, to say the least. Uh, so it is uh, middle of April and for the last week or so uh, I've been posting on Instagram uh, photos of my Craviotto drums, uh, or mainly the snare drums, not the kit. Um, and I just thought I'd do it for a bit of fun, but something that came up in the uh, little question and answer thing that I did uh, a while back, and I think it was like, had like I think it was how did I get into collecting? Um, and I just, I kind of wanted to expand on that. So, uh, I mean, the honest answer is, is that I, I genuinely did sort of just fall into collecting. I didn't sort of specifically set out to have like however many snare drums it is I have, 150 odd or whatever. Um, but I, it, it's just, I think it, it's, it's to a degree, it, I mean, to a degree, the, the, the Craviotto stuff definitely was something that I, I sort of actively pursued, but I never set out to have so many snare drums. A few years ago, someone uh, asked me, oh, you know, when are you going to get to 100 sort of thing? And I, and I kind of like laughed it off at the time because I think I, I had about 60, 70 odd snare drums and, and, you know, it was that numerically it doesn't seem to be that far away. Um, you know, you've kind of already committed to having a lot of drums. Uh, you, you know, sort of 30 or 40 away from that figure. It seemed like a long way away. And it was never something that I intentionally, uh, you know, uh, sort of went after as, as, a, as a numerical thing or anything. And, and the irony was, was uh, a, a while later, I actually sort of, I went around and counted and realized I had like 110 snare drums and I'd passed that 100 mark and not even realized. Uh, so I don't know really what that says about me, but, um, but I, you know, I was, I, was, I, I was so surprised at that. I went round and counted about three times just to make sure I was actually right. Uh, and I think it was about 109, 109, 110 snare drums at that point, uh, which in itself obviously is a lot. But I, I remember, um, buying my first Craviotto snare drum and I, I I very specifically remember it actually um I mean it was in Wembley Drum Centre which is my local store uh I can't remember the year exactly uh but I, I probably had to be able to pin it down if I if I did some research but uh and when we're talking uh at least 2006 uh it's possibly a little bit earlier than that but um I had been looking actually uh, at uh, a 12 inch, I think it was a 12 by, I think it was a 12 by 7 or maybe a 12 by 6 uh, DW Edge actually. Um, I'd been looking at that and, and there was just something about this, uh, it was actually it's this snare drum. And it just, there was just something visually about it which really appealed to me. And, you know, and, and that was the one. That was the one that started it all off. And um, I still have that drum. I don't play it very often because uh, it, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, my preferred size is 12 by 6 and a half. 12 by 6 and a half? 14 by 6 and a half. Uh, which would probably explain why I have so many of the damn things in that little area of Craviotto. I'd probably, I'd probably say 80% of the, the Craviotto snare drums I have are, are around that size. Um, but I, I, very, I very clearly remember buying that snare drum and falling in love with the figuring of it, of just the, you know, the, the outer veneer. And it's, 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 just, it's just a lovely, lovely drum. And, uh, and I will never part with it. But uh, that was the, that was the start of it, and I can't remember what came next. Um, I mean, I'd be able to dig out an early photo. Uh, in fact, I, I I got a a couple of early photos uh, of my my little collection as was. But that that was like the original six, and uh, and it and it just kind of snowballed uh, from there. And what what happened was certainly. Um, my, the, the first drum I purchased from Steve Maxwell was that um, that 14 five and a half timeless timber, uh, and that was in 2006. And I and again I, I actually remember that, um, and I was humming and ahhing about it, and that cost me two and a half thousand uh, dollars at the time. 
And there was another one. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll put some photos up of, of, of that so you get an idea of that. Now, that particular drum was actually one of the last uh, boards that Johnny had uh, of the, the more sort of highly figured um, bird's eye maple uh, from the timeless timber stock that he had. Uh, and there was, there was that drum and then there was another drum as well uh, which was even more highly figured, um, and that was three thousand dollars. And at the time, I just couldn't stretch the extra five hundred. Uh, I mean, if it had been if it had been two fifty, I possibly would have done, but I just couldn't. I couldn't stretch any further uh, than you know than than the two and a half I was already paying. And it was fine, you know. I mean, I, I got a very nice drum. I've still got it. Again, I'll never part with that drum. Um, but I, I think that was that was kind of the, <laughs> the starting of going downhill for me in terms of spending uh, obscene amount of money uh, or obscene amounts of money uh, on on you, you know very well admittedly very worthwhile drums, very beautiful drums as well. Um, but when the um, when the the original AK Craviotto Diamond series uh, drums came out, I. I got one from Steve Maxwell, uh, and I got the I got the fourteen by six and a half from Steve, um, and these are the only two I think I've got where I bought more than one because the original sort of few runs were were all out in pairs, and I think they were the only ones that I didn't get on the pair of numbers. So if you know it's like three of both sides or whatever, not or number three of both sides. Um, but that was the, that was the only one where I didn't get the chance to do that. And but I got the fourteen six and a half from Steve, uh, and then I think it was a matter of I loved it so much. I then managed to get I think that was probably the last one for sale uh, over in in the UK, and I, I ended up getting that from the distributor. Um, and that in itself, I mean that drum in itself has got some funny provenance to it, well not say provenance to it as such, but a little bit of fun history to it, in the fact that um, Bob Henrit reviewed that drum. Now, I uh, appreciate that outside of the UK you might not know who Bob Henrit is, um, but uh, and in fact some of the younger guys in the UK might not know who Bob Henry is, but he's a very um, he's a very well known part of the, the the British drumming scene from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He was in the band The Kinks uh, for a, a while, and he he's just had a long, rich history in music. Um, and Bob Bob reviewed that drum uh, before I got it, um, and then subsequently, a few years later. I happened to, I've said before I do stuff, I do reviews and stuff, articles for MikeDolware.com. Uh, Mike is friends with Steve Smith, and that Steve Smith. Um, and I happened to take this 14 by 5.5 uh, down to something that we were doing where Steve was actually, uh, Steve was actually there as a guest. And, um, and I've got video and photos of Steve play. He, I was packing the drum up actually. I think we'd used it already. And, um, and and basically, uh, I was packing it away, and Steve wanted to have a go on it. So I've got I've got video of of Steve Smith playing my snare drum. Uh, <laughs> and the funny funny thing with that is that particular drum. Um, I never really liked the way it sounded. I mean, I did, but not. I was never in love with the way it sounded. Um, but the room that we were in at the time. Uh, was a, um, you know, it, it could be a small sports hall. Um, you know, it was just very high ceiling, brick. I think there's mirrors on one wall as well. You know, it's and certainly wood floors as well. So acoustically, it's a very, it's a very nice room because it's just lots of. You'd love to record drums in there because it's just, you know, it's one of those sort of very natural reverby sort of rooms. And um, I think it what somewhere between the way I had it tuned up and that room, it was the first time I ever, uh, I ever hit it and 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 I'm like, whoa, that sounds fantastic. Um, you know, and and I and I've loved it ever since. Not that I'd ever get rid of it, but like you know, it was just another reason to go. Ah, you know, and I've since tweaked the tuning on it, and and I I, I do like it a whole lot more now. Uh, but I think it I think it was just me and the way I had it set up. But um, so I got the original Diamond series, and then uh, the Copper 
drums came out after that, and then I got both of those, and I think I've got number, uh, I think it's number three of both of those, the, the, those, the six and a half and the five and a half, I've got number, number three of both. Um, and then they did the uh, the Masters Brass uh, High, oh, there was so the uh, Masters Metal Hybrid, uh, which is brass and a copper, uh, and I think I've got like number six of both of those. Um, I think that's right. And then, uh, then I uh, met my girlfriend, and and uh, we bought a house together. And so suddenly, I didn't have as much money. Um, uh, but I, I, um, or now my wife actually, she'll kill me if she sees that. But like, uh, you know, other things in life took priority, and I suddenly didn't have quite so much really uh, green uh, to to buy as many drums as I, I would have liked. But uh, I think after that, the, there was the Masters Brass line. Now I I did have the chance to buy all four for probably quite quite a good price, um, but I just didn't have the funds or I maybe even the inclination at that point either uh to, to buy all four. So I I went for the uh 14 by four I think it is. Um and and I forget which number I've got of that. But that's a fantastic drum. Uh, I mean I find that drum to be very playable as well. I don't find it to be quite as um potentially delicate as some as the as some of the others not that they are delicate i think it's in my head that they're a little bit more delicate but this one's very pliable and then um and then after that there was the uh the Bro master's bronze drum uh as well uh which adrian uh, did for johnny uh and i've got the uh, i i went for the uh the smaller so it's the 5.25 bronze uh drum uh and again it was just a matter of i i wanted something from each of those lines um but i just didn't have the funds really to stretch to uh buying both of those ones so um yeah no but it, it, it you know I, but i'm cool with that and i think probably in the interim i was also picking other bits up as well uh from steve maxwell and and, uh, and one or two bits over here as well i mean i the the bird's eye maple uh 14 six and a half which i've um uh, I've already actually posted on uh, on Instagram. I got from a friend uh, of mine, um, and he he um, I got that from a for a really good price because I think at the time the market was a little bit sort of more deflated than than it well, certainly than it is now. But um, I got that from probably a bargain price, I think. Um, but you know, in between, it was a matter of um, just I, I used to routinely go on Steve Maxwell's website. I mean, I was on it like twice a day sometimes, uh, which doesn't say much for me, does it? Um, but um, I, it was it was a matter of basically, uh, you know, catching things as and when they came up. Uh, and I've got um, in the collection, I've got the uh, if you've seen in the last sort of few years, maybe the last five years now, I can't remember. Um, there was a collaboration between uh, Steve Maxwell, uh, Johnny, and. Arnie Lang to produce the uh, Lang Gladstone um, Craviottos. Um, I've I've got the the prototype of the fourteen by five and a half, um, and in fact the video the video for that drum, uh, or rather vi the video where I think Steve talks in depth uh, about those drums and the run that they were going to do. That's actually my drum. Um, and um, I didn't really want the six and a half because uh, the six and a half was set up with gut snares, and, and it was, uh, I, it, uh, you know, and, it, and it was, I think it was a couple hundred quid more, and I was like, yeah, I don't really need that. But I've got that. Um, I've got some of the uh, limited run stuff as well. Um, uh, so the, there was the Joe Morello tribute uh, drums. Uh, which was a run of six that then Steve commissioned those to uh, raise some cash for Joe Morello's uh, widow. Um, they were in, I'm thinking about 2012, 2013, somewhere around then. Um, you've got the uh, the the uh, Super Swing tribute dr uh, tri tribute drums, and that was a run of six drums. Again, they were like the the Morello ones. They they basically they were part of a, a series of six. But they were all separately different drums, and they were separately uh, badged with one of one 
uh, you know, sort of one of one badges whilst still being part of this little series. Uh, so you've got the Super Sing uh, tribute drums as well, which were all, uh, I think, the, now the Super Swing uh, sort of sub line uh, in Craviotto is something that they, um, they still do. But these were like the initial drums, and these were very special drums. And again, they were all different, but there was a run of six, and they're all individually badged. They're very rare. Um, and I've got one. A friend of mine in Australia uh, has got one. Uh, and I remember seeing, I think I've seen one, well, I think one came up for sale years ago. I think I, I didn't see it, but I subsequently came across it. Uh, and then you've got the. Uh, there was another uh, another one, uh, another line, a uh, little run that Steve did, another run of six drums that were uh, sort of dedicated to uh, some of the uh, uh, the old big band drummers. Uh, there was Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa. Uh, I've got the Davy drum uh, the, for Davy Tough. Um, in fact, my friend, my same, same friend in Aussie, uh, he, he had the one for Buddy Rich. Um, and and I did see one. I definitely saw one of those had subsequently come up for sale uh, a couple of years ago. Um, you know, and and so you know, it, it's it's a matter of picking these things up. I think or I did pick these things up just by being in the right sort of in the right place at the right time and always having a little bit of money. Um, you, you know, to sort of hand and um, you know, I've I've got some of the others, the the other the other metal drums as well. Uh, the um, uh, the solitaire drums. I got one of the 14, six and a half, just the regular matte black ones. I've got the titanium one, uh, which is a 14 by six, which is, uh, which you know, is a is a lovely drum in itself. Actually, it's, it's got a lovely pure ring to it, uh, which I love. Uh, I recorded an album a couple of years ago now, and uh, I used it on a few tracks. It was great. Um, and there's uh, there's a photo if I can find it. I'm pretty sure I know where the photo is. Uh, there's a photo I've and, and this one lives in the house actually. Um, there's a uh, it's a photo of Johnny. I think it was at the Chicago Drum Show uh, where he's sort of leaning over this uh, row of drums and and my drum is kind of basically at the end of the end of the row. And I think I think you call it Seafoam Green Pearl. Uh, it's the only one that I've ever seen. Uh, as I, I possibly is unique. Um, I, I never want to say is it a, a conclusive without actually knowing for sure. Uh, but I've never seen another one uh, for sure. Um, I've got Green Sparkle. Uh, I've said before actually, you know, Green Sparkle is kind of like my favourite sparkle colour. Um, and I've got a Green Sparkle. Uh, 14 by 5 I think it is uh, with gold hardware and I was told with that one um, I was told by someone who actually used to work at Craviotto at the time uh, that there was two possibly three of uh, three drums built out built out in that spec um, that were that were made and funny enough one came up for sale I mean again years ago now probably ten years ago uh, one came up for sale uh, in the states, and it was sort of touted as being unique. And I and I didn't want to get in touch and you know rain on their parade. Um, but uh, you know that that was up for sale, and I only found out about it because my friend in Aussie uh, actually uh, mailed me and said, "Are you selling your your green sparkle snare?" I'm like, "No, because it's here." Um, and and that's how I found out about that one, which was I had a chuckle about it. Uh, let me think. I've got uh, uh, in fact the same guy that worked at Craviotto. He built some drums himself, um, and I've got uh, a very lovely uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, I can't think. It's it's um, it's one of the nitron. It's a, it's it's a it's a it's an old Gretsch color. Um, something nitron. I'll put the I'll put the the, the photo of the of the drum. Uh, I can't remember the specifics of it, but it's basically it's uh, it's a unique build out with with that uh, with that finish, which is a wrap on it. Um, and I don't think Craviotto uh, as a as a whole ha ever did a, an awful lot of wrap drums. Um, but there's uh, there's that drum. I said it's a fourteen five and a half. It's got die cast hoops. Uh, for memory, it's got a Danette strainer on it. Um, 
and uh, it's also got the the cast. Um, I can't remember what you call them now. The the super swing lugs, you know, um, not not basically the tube lugs. Um, so there's that. Uh, I've got the very first. Um, uh, it was the the white marine pearl. Uh, it's the way it was the first build out made uh, with white marine pearl wood hoops and thirty degree bearing edges. Um, and that that generally lives in the house. Uh, I've got. Uh, let me think. I've got. Uh, I've, in fact, that was actually a centerpiece drum of Nam in about two thousand and ten. That white marine pearl drum. And I think the one. I think it was a year before or a year after. Um, I've I've got the centerpiece drum from uh, then as well. And I, I want to say two thousand and twelve. Actually, uh, oh, no, actually, that can't be right. That can't be right. Um, it was probably 2008 then. Um, I'm going to guess 2008, 2009. Um, and I've got that drum, and that's a, a Bubinga 14 by six and a half. And at that point, I think it was possibly only the third Bubinga drum uh, that Johnny had made. And this was before uh, Craviotto did some more recent Bubinga shell drums. Uh, this is one of the, the sort of the very, very early ones. And they said that's that was a NAM centerpiece drum. So that's basically built out with uh, gold hardware and um, and uh, John uh, John Aldridge engraved hoops as well. Uh, I've got one of only... They're kind of built out as, as prototype drums. Um, I've got a Bubinga uh, 14 by 6.5. Uh, which it, which looks very much like it's a prototype. The shell's unfinished. Uh, it's got the black oval badge on it, um, but it's it's the proto. It's I said this sort of unfinished prototype finish with um, with brass hardware on it. Um, and for for the longest time, the only the only reference to Craviotto Bubinga drums on the whole of the internet that I could ever find uh, was what I put there. Um, and and for, for 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 ages, it seemed that this this first uh, unfinished Bubinga drum was like the only one. And then years ago, a couple of years ago, someone actually contacted me, um, and um, and said they they had a fifteen by six and a half. Basically, I think of the same drum. Never saw a photo of it, but um, and they were made for uh, Johnny's business partner. Um, who who is still involved with the company now? Um, they were made for her. Um, what else have I got? What else have I got? I have a uh, I have a fourteen by four maple timeless timber, uh, which was from the run of um, timeless timber drums that Steve Maxwell had uh, asked Johnny to build for him. Uh, I can't think when. Maybe I want to say two thousand and four ish. Uh, or so, um, and and the odd thing with that, and the fun fact with that, uh, it's got Steve Maxwell's name on on the on the badge. That these came with with like personalised badges. Uh, so it's got Steve Maxwell's name on it. So it's one of Steve's personal drums. The drum is numbered number eight, uh, and a couple of years ago, Matt Chamberlain um, happened to be selling one of the same drums and very very oddly that one was also numbered number eight um, and I'd love to I think I probably still have got somewhere got a photo of it uh, but it would be an old hard drive somewhere but it was really funny to find that out um, but it, yeah um, and, I, and I mentioned it to Steve uh, Maxwell uh, a, a while later and he said Johnny must have just got mixed up with the numbers or something but uh, so it's funny that that happened um, but what else have we got? What else? Um, I mean, I got some other. I got a couple of DW badged um, uh, sort of Craviotto shells. Uh, I got uh, one which is uh, a DW badged. Uh, th I think. God, I think it's a thirteen by six and a half, uh, which used to belong to Tom Meadows, who was who is Kylie Minogue's drummer, who used to be a, a Craviotto endorser. But that was, I think, before. He was actually an endorser. Um, I've got uh, I've got the kit. 
uh, which many of you will have seen. Uh, I've got the matching snare drum for that kit, um, which is the 13x7, uh, which Tom had put uh, Yamaha wood hoops on. Um, and, and I love that drum. It's got a, a kind of a softer attack to it, but it, I love that drum. Um, and it's got sort of more rounded edges on it as well. Um, I've got some other oddities, and I'm just trying to think... Uh, uh, what they are. Oh, so I've got a couple of walnut drums. F strangely enough, um, they're both they're both walnut, but they both look very different. Um, one of them is kind of one of them's got like nickel hardware on it. I can never remember which one. I think it's the the, the non Dave Maddox one. Um, but one of them's one of them's got nickel hardware on. And I did a video on both of them uh, a few years ago, and it was literally the only time I noticed. That these drums were had different uh, amount of lugs on them was when I sat down and did the video, and I'd had those drums for a couple of years at that point. Uh, but one of them is an eight lug, and one of them is a ten lug. Um, but the eight lug drum I got from Steve Maxwell, um, and it used to belong to Dave Mattox, who um, you may or may not have heard of, but he used to be in Fairport Convention. He's a British guy, but he lives in Boston and has done since the late nineties. Um, a big Yamaha guy, but he also is a big snare drum guy. Um, and this particular drum, uh, as you said, I think it's, a, it's an eight lug, uh, which in itself isn't unusual, but the fact that it was built out, as far as I can tell, it was built out with a, an old Ludwig strainer and butt plate on it, makes it a little bit more uh, unique, I suppose. And I've never changed the heads on that drum, and I probably never will. Um, it's got, uh, it, it came with Evan's heads. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the, the uh, specifics of the heads. I think it's like a power dot reverse on top, um, which was tuned really low. And, and I remember taking it to rehearsal, either the night it turned up or um, maybe very soon after. And, and I hit it. It was just so low, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything with it. So I had to kind of just tune it up a little bit but I've never I've never taken the heads off I've never looked inside it uh, and it's got a uh, a sort of uh, a f like a frosted bottom snare side on it and again I can't remember what the specifics of the heads are but again it's the only one I've ever seen like that um, but that that was a bit of an oddity um, I've got um, a, a, a very very early one which is a 13 by six and a half um which i think is uh oh god i think it's 98 i think it's an I, th I think it's actually named 98 uh i'm not aware that johnny named an awful lot of his drums uh but i think early on he, he did because uh, i've seen another reference to someone uh very recently actually um who uh who's who's also like had a number in in his drum uh and uh but this one's built out with um brass hardware and it's got a pearl strainer on it pearl strainer and butt plate on it um which is uh which is nice um and they i mean they work just fine but you know uh i've got i've, I've, never, I've never been a really a big piccolo person but I've, I've got a uh, i've got a couple of piccolos that i liked and i've always held on to uh and i've got a 14 by 4 montaneri um which i've had for 20 years uh, and that's a ply shell uh, in uh, pink champagne sparkle, so it's also a very funky colour. Uh, but the, I've got a I've got a 14 by 4 Craviotto in um, peacock sparkle, um, and I, I I know that um, as someone actually pointed out to me uh, just this week, actually. Um, I, I've got this 14 by 4 now that actually came from Steve Maxwell's shop in New York and it came directly from a kit um, and um, I have corresponded with the person who actually bought that kit funnily enough uh, he, I don't think he bought he didn't buy it brand new but he, he subsequently uh, bought it second hand so that's um, somewhere on the east coast uh, of the states and um there was a 14 by six and a half, uh, which um, Steve had for what seemed to be like ages uh, up in the New York shop. And it was there and it was there and it was there. And I'm like looking at it and going, and then I thought, oh, you know what? I really dig that finish. And of course, by the time I go and ask Steve about it, 
it had gone. Uh, you know, like several times I think it happened. I'd missed it by about a day or so. Um, and, and that's why you should never sit on things. Um, just buy it and say what the hell. Um, and that's my overall buying advice. Um, but you know, I, but he said basically, well, that was the 14 by 6.5, but you, I've got this other one. You can have that if you want it. And I'm like, fantastic. Uh, so there may or may not be a couple uh, of... Uh, those 14 six and a halves in uh, Peacock Sparkle. I'm not quite sure, um, but uh, I come across someone uh, in in the last week. Uh, I was sort of pointed at someone who who also had one. Uh, so it may or may not have been the same drum. I'm not completely sure. Um, but what else have we got? What else have we got? Um, it doesn't it doesn't bide well that I've got like no Craviosos in here to look at and remind me. Because uh, most of them are in the other end. Oh, I've got a 14 by 8 uh, poplar, uh, which, uh, you know, it's a, it's got wooden hoops on it as well. So the Craviotto wooden hoops are kind of about that size. So that's about an inch in height. And uh, unlike the, the Yamaha style hoops, which are sort of short and squatty, uh, probably about half an inch thick and 19 plies wide, um, the Craviotto, uh, as I said, is kind of higher and thinner, um, and, and and that's fine. I mean, they both have different sonic uh, characteristics, but uh, this this eight fourteen by eight poplar. So you've got uh, obviously the, the the eight deep shell, and then you've got like the extra inch and a half of the hoop. You know, um, makes it a very deep drum to get into a basket, and, and I don't sit that high either. So, um, but the funny thing with that is, you think oh, it's a fourteen by eight drum. I can pick that up literally with my little finger. It is so light. I, I, you know, I can spin it. You know, it's 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 such a uh, fantastically light drum, uh, and it and it's uh, it, yeah, it's one of those things. Don't use it very often because it's got a very specific sound. Um, I've got a, a a fourteen by eight stacked uh, shell, and I can't remember what the woods are. Uh, I think one of them's walnut, one of them's maple. Um, it's one of the drums. I know exactly which case it's in. Um, but I just, uh, I, I can't remember. I think it's on one of the lower rack uh, shelves in the other room, and I haven't got around to taking a photo of it yet. So, um, but there's that, and, and you know, I got a lot of, I can never get a sound out of it that I kind of really dug, uh, you know, and um, I got a lot of grief a few years ago for, and I left the videos up, but I got a lot of grief for putting some tape on that and using it as, uh, as kind of like my Steve Jordan vultures type sound drum and uh, you know people endlessly whined at me because it's just like you know oh that lovely drum and you've got all that tape on it it's like yeah that lovely drum and I've got all that tape on it it's mine what are you gonna do um as I think a few people actually said to them but I did subsequently uh change their heads out and uh I got a I got you know I got a, a much uh, more agreeable for me sound out of it and I've left it like that and you know it, it's great I think uh, you know w with anything drum wise sometimes uh, you know they might not ship with the type of head that you like on them I got that one second hand it turned up with Aquarian heads on it I've got nothing against Aquarian I think they I, I have used them before but um, I could never really find what I was after in Aquarian um, and after I changed the heads out it, it you know, I, I I found the sound more agreeable, but um, I'm I'm missing I, I'm missing uh, many drums uh, in this little um, musing, um, and um, and and that's probably going to be an annoyance when I wrap this up and and think oh I could have talked about that one. I haven't done. Uh, I I couldn't tell you off the top of my head uh, how many Craviotto videos. Uh, I've done uh, to date, um, but I'm I'm thinking I probably have. It, it, I've probably done a maximum of, of about half of them, I would guess, um, and certainly I think the ones that I did a while ago. So I've been doing this for um, over seven years. These videos, uh, it, not nearly as frequently. I just used to do them periodically. Uh, before and they weren't very well filmed and they weren't very well recorded uh, and I will go back and, and I've said before I will go back and basically start redoing things in a in a more contemporary manner 
But coming back to the collecting side of things, um, I think I, I've been lucky um, up until now. I've, I've been very lucky to be able to position to sort of see something and generally be able to jump on it if I if I want to jump on it. But my 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 key thing, my, I suppose my my advice to anyone that actually wants to start collecting um, is, is to uh, is to make up your mind what it is you actually want to collect. I did make a specific conscious decision to collect Craviotto snare drums. Uh, I didn't go out of my way to uh, specifically have, you know, 35, which is kind of where it's peaked at. I haven't, um, I've come close, but I haven't actually bought uh, any new Craviottos for a couple of years now. Um, and, and I'm not looking to sell. Um, uh, but my, my key advice to anyone that wants to try and collect anything is to basically it's like pick a subject and then go after it um that that's what i did and um it's very easy to sort of say i want to buy every drum that ludwig made in 1967 um but you kind of end you know you, you endlessly chase after something um because i think they you know they were doing stuff in like you know uh, eight lug, ten lug, six lug, and then different colours, and it, it, you end up just chasing after this almost unattainable goal. Uh, and then the reason why I didn't go after vintage stuff was simply because uh, there were certain people that had everything mostly sewn up. So apart from the the possibility of finding that Slingland Black Beauty that's just come out of someone's loft at a boot sale was really remote. And the time I started collecting Craviotto stuff, um, you know, as I said, was about sort of 2006. So I was lucky enough to be collecting them whilst Johnny was still alive and still making them. And, um, you know, the, 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 the prices weren't being artificially inflated by his untimely passing. Um, and so I think I, you know, I was like, it wasn't a matter of, it wasn't a matter of I was, I was some sort of shrewd, uh, I made some sort of shrewd decision to to do this now because the guy's not going to be around forever. It wasn't anything like that at all. I just, I fell in love with with the way that Johnny made drums, and um, and, and as I said, I was lucky enough to basically be able to pursue that uh, up until. Uh, you know, kind of where it, it peaked at, and 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 I and it, like I said, I, I didn't go out to sort of specifically have 35 of the damn things. Um, it it just so happened that it, it you know it, it ended up that way. And I and I'll put a, a a photo of what was the the latest, well the last time I took them all out, which was I think in 2018 now. Um, and you'll see that there's actually two kits in that photo. Um, the the other kit, not the white one, uh, I only had for a week, um, and I subsequently gave it back. Um, not for anything to do with the drums, but um, I, I so, so I don't have that kit anymore. Um, but uh, everything else I still have. Um, none of it is for sale. Um, but um, you know, it was. I, I've been very lucky, and, and as and as I said, I think that the only time I ever made a conscious decision to collect drums was with the Craviotto stuff, and that, as I said, that kind of started around sort of twenty to uh, two thousand and six or so. Um, I ended up with a lot of drums. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of drums that are sort of around the two hundred pound mark, and it's kind of one of those things where. I could sell them, uh, you know. I could sell some of them, and, and in fact, I have moved a few on. But uh, I could sell them, but they're not really taking a whole lot of room up because they're they're generally the ones that are on the rack in the other room that aren't boxed up. And um, you know, it's just I I don't know if I I get even get back what I paid for them, even though it wasn't a lot of money. Um, and they're nice to take out, and it's nice to have drums you can go and gig with, and you know, it's nice to also have drums, uh, you know, that I can just jam on in here as well. But uh, I've spoken enough. <laughs> I think, you know, I hope this was enjoyable. Um, I, I know that there's only sort of been photos. Um, if you see this, today is April the 15th, 2020. Um, I am on Instagram under the same name that this channel is under. Um, 
I'm not saying please do follow me, because uh, I'm just not like that. Um, but I am posting, uh, I'm making it, I'm making it, the one thing that I make sure that I'm doing every day is posting uh, a photo of uh, a Craviotto snare drum, just for a bit of fun to, uh, these, these are, you know, slightly gloomy times at the moment, and that's the only reference I'm making to this crap. Um, but uh, I, th I thought I would just, you know, share the love a little bit in that respect because my postings on Instagram and Facebook are, uh, you know, at the best, I think, sometimes fairly periodic, um, especially sort of Instagram. Um, but um, I'm making, I'm making it, uh, I'm making a concerted effort to post a Craviotto snare drum every day. So if you want to see a new snare drum every day, uh, follow me on Instagram. Um, and if you want to, if you want to talk to me, that's always a good way to get hold of me because I will get back to you fairly quickly. Um, not that I'm on it all the time or anything, but I will get back to you. Um, but other than that, I hope this has been entertaining. Uh, I hope this has been a little bit of maybe insightful. Um, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.